yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing the top 60 Karate Kid Easter eggs, epic callbacks and hidden details you might have missed in the fourth season of Cobra Kai. Spoilers ahead of course, so take care. The name of the abandoned building where Johnny trains his students this season is no coincidence. We meet at the old Weber Industrial Warehouse. Weber was actually the original surname for Daniel's character in the Karate Kid movies, but when Ralph Macchio was cast in the role, they changed the name to LaRusso to mirror the actor's Italian ancestry. Johnny's reckless attitude to training his students continues in season 4 as they navigate burning containers and piles of smashed glass, leading Daniel to worry about getting sued, to which Johnny replies, Sue me for what? This is a shout out to Rocky V, in which a broke Rocky delivers the same line. Touch me now, Sue. Sue me for what? And that movie was directed by John G. Alvordson, who also directed the Karate Kid trilogy. Although Silver is initially reluctant to return to the world of karate, he eventually takes out a hairband in the third episode and pulls his hair back into a ponytail, recreating his look in the Karate Kid 3. And the dramatic classical style score that accompanies this moment is exactly the same theme used to introduce Silver in the original movie, and it also plays as Silver relishes his victory over Kreese in the season 4 finale. The vanity plate on the car Silver lends Robbie for his prom night is a reference to the Quicksilver three rule method that the villain explained to Daniel in the third Karate Kid movie. I call it Quicksilver. A man can't stand, he can't fight. A man can't breathe, he can't fight. A man can't see, he can't fight. In season four, Silver teaches a first rule to the students at Cobra Kai. A man can't stand, he can't fight. And encourages Tori to use a third rule against Sam in the All Valley final. Give her a shot to the other eye. She can't see, she can't fight. Silver's third rule also comes up by the 80s martial arts movie Bloodsport that the students watch at the drive-in. As Johnny preps Eagle Fang for the upcoming confrontation with Cobra Kai, he warns them that they'll probably play dirty, to which Devon adds, Like when Chong Lee threw dirt into Van Damme's eyes in Bloodsport. There's another Karate Kid 3 callback when Silver teaches the Cobra Kai teens about the three things they need to win in a speech which echoes almost word for word what he told Daniel back in the 80s. There are three things that make a champion. The three Ds. Desire. Devotion. And discipline. Plan. The first two, I can't give you. Yes! The last one I can, but you have to be You're willing to receive it. Are you, Mr. LaRusso? When Dimitri does some digging into Silver's past, he can't find much dirt on him except for some details on a toxic waste scandal in Borneo from the 80s, which is a reference to this moment from the third movie. What do you mean you can't dump it in Borneo? Who in Borneo knows what chloride sludge is? Just do it. Although Silver turns Crease down on his first visit, later when he goes to his wine cellar, he performs his signature wheel kick on a bottle of wine. <laughs> Telegraphing that wheel kick. And that Bossel's label came in estate wines is a sneaky Easter egg to the original Karate Kid creator and screenwriter Robert Mark Kamen, who in real life has a vineyard and wine label by that name. Later on, Daniel tries some of Johnny's training techniques, one of which involves doing push ups on his knuckles, something Johnny has already had Cobra Kai students do, and which he likely learnt from his old sensei, Kreese. Give me 60 push ups on your knuckles. When Sam and the Miyagi Do students refuse to do the jump across two buildings Johnny planned for their training, he gets annoyed at her. If you want to sit in the back seat your whole life, go right ahead. That dig is a play on how Sam was literally sitting in the back seat when her friend crashed into Johnny's car in the show's first scene. Season. During the Miyagi Do lesson about catching koi fish with bare hands, Miguel falls into the pond. Looks like you're a little wet behind the ears. Daniel's reaction is a throwback to the first movie when he fell into the lake and Mr. Miyagi said, Daniel, sir, you are wet the behind the ear. Miguel falling in is also a little payback of sorts for Sam, who he mocked when she told him about her Miyagi Do training. We train in junkyards and cement trucks. And I've trained in that pond over there. Ew, a pond. And given how protective Daniel is about Chris being sick in the boat, not the that's probably Mr. Miyagi's original one. As Daniel's thinking about why he needs to fight Johnny again, there's a flashback to the events of the first movie with a clip from a deleted scene of young Johnny slipping a pie underneath Daniel at school. This unused footage was teased all the way back in the show's second season. You smeared a blueberry pie on my shirt. That's because you put it on my chair first. The follow-up to that moment of Daniel getting back at Johnny with the pie also plays during Johnny's training montage as he prepares for his fight with Daniel. By the way, Johnny's badass mixtape 4 that plays in this montage is a little meta reference, as this is the show's fourth season, similar to how the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie had a volume 2 mixtape. 
And Survivor's song Burning Heart that Johnny listens to while training is another Rocky hat tip, as it was written for the fourth film in Sylvester Stallone's franchise. And the training montage itself, including the beach scenes, is a tribute to Rocky's various training scenes. Just before their rematch, Johnny asks Daniel, Don't you ever think you might be wrong about anything? Which is likely a little nod to another deleted Karate Kid scene, which saw Johnny and Daniel clash at a school drinking fountain. Well, you ever think your teacher might be wrong then? Johnny asking Daniel why on earth he has a rock in the middle of his dojo is a callback to the question Miguel asked Sam in season three. This place is crazy. What's the rock say? My dad won't tell me, or maybe he doesn't know. The inscription means Envy sees only the garden without the rocks, which seems similar to the English idiom that the grass always looks greener on the other side. So it's likely a reminder to strive for internal peace, focus and balance as Miyagi-Do teaches rather than constantly comparing yourself to others. When Daniel asks Johnny about his training plan, he mentions some of the wildly unconventional techniques he's used before. Some days I'll toss him in a cement mixer. Which is a nod to the second season when he made his Cobra Kai students work out inside a real cement truck. The showrunners have said they really care about their episode titles and often tie them thematically to the episode's content and to the original movies. And the eighth episode, Party Time, does both, as not only does it feature the students' prom and Stingray's house party, but it's also a hat tip to the moment in the third movie where Silver and Crease fight Mr. Miyagi. Party Time! And notice how Stingray, the person who says those words in the TV series, PARTY TIME! ends up getting his butt kicked by the end of the episode, just as Silver and Crease were beaten by Mr. Miyagi in the movie. When Stingray's neighbor accuses him of playing kung fu with a bunch of kids, Ray firmly points out, It's not kung fu, it's Cobra Kai. That feels like a little wink towards the 2010 Karate Kid remake with Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan, which features kung fu rather than karate. Interestingly, Jaden's dad, Will Smith, is an executive producer on Cobra Kai because his production company has owned the Karate Kid franchise since that 2010 reboot. Daniel's cousin Vanessa is played by Ralph Macchio's real-life daughter Julia, which adds to the humour of Daniel and Amanda acting so sneeringly towards her offer as a child psychology student to help them with their son Anthony. No offence, but if we were going to get a pro, we could do better than Marissa Tomei Jr. The way Vanessa confidently wipes the floor with the LaRusso's condescending attitude towards her based on nothing but their own prejudice echoes how Marissa Tomei's character did the same thing to a patronising lawyer who refused to believe her automotive experience in the movie My Cousin Vinny, which also starred the Karate Kid himself. When the tournament announcer introduces Miyagi-Do, he says, And they're ready to show the world that they're the best around. That's a deep cut reference to the original All Valley from the first Karate Kid movie and the song You're the Best, which played during the tournament montage as Daniel and the other contenders fought through the qualifying rounds. Fun fact, You're the Best was actually written for Rocky III, but got the chop from that movie in favour of Survivor's Eye of the Tiger. And Rocky III gets name dropped by Miguel this season, who mentions former rivals Apollo and Rocky to persuade Johnny to join forces with Danny against Cobra Kai. Johnny and Daniel's contrasting approaches lead to some amusing takes on Mr. Miyagi's training techniques, so when Daniel has the kids doing wax on wax off on his cars, Johnny has them cleaning out the trash in his car instead. Get all the cans out of there. If you find any loose change, it belongs to me. And when Daniel brings out Mr. Miyagi's wood sanding discs from the first movie for some sand the floor training, he discovers that Johnny's ruined his plan as he smooths down the whole deck already with a machine. Johnny does gain some appreciation from Yagido techniques though when Daniel slices the top off a glass beer bottle he's holding, a callback to how Mr. Miyagi chopped the tops off four bottles of beer when some men refused to take them off his truck. Don't forget it saved your ass a few weeks ago from Crease, and that wasn't the first time. That last line is a reference to how Mr. Miyagi saved a young Johnny from Crease's chokehold in The Karate Kid 2. When Amanda refers to Johnny as Captain Eagle Claw, although she gets the name of his dojo wrong, it actually makes more sense than the real name, Eagle Fang. Uh, eagles don't have fang. The showrunners have said that they came up with the fang part of Johnny's dojo title because he thinks it sounds badass and it's consistent with his ignorance. And Johnny's misunderstanding of eagle anatomy continues. When an eagle's hungry, doesn't wait around for a fish to jump at its feet. Talons. It's not talent, it's instinct. Johnny gets annoyed at Miguel spending time with Daniel this season, and it seems to especially irritate him that they watch Top Gun together. Given Johnny's long standing love of the movie Iron Eagle, which was released the same year as Top Gun and is similarly themed, I wouldn't be surprised if he's also annoyed that Daniel showed Miguel Top Gun instead of Iron Eagle. 
Also, you can just tell from the way Johnny describes Top Gun that he identifies personally with Iceman's character and sees Daniel as Cruz's dweeby maverick. Cruz is the worst of men. Iceman, best of the best, in comes this new guy, total dweeb. You can't call yourself a maverick. Something else that hits too close to home for Johnny is when he finds out his students tricked Cobra Kai into getting soaked by baseball sprinklers. So you picked a fight, didn't show up, and then you doused him with the hose? That doubtless made him remember being on the receiving end of Daniel's hose prank in the school bathroom in the original movie. And there's a nod to what happened to young Daniel after that scene when Anthony LaRusso and his friends bully a cosplaying Kenny then chase him up to a wire fenced gate. However, unlike young Daniel, Kenny does manage to escape. The night before Daniel takes the Eagle Fang students for training, Johnny warns Miguel Make sure all that defense doesn't turn you into a cream puff. Which harks back to the insult directed at Johnny in the original movie during his tournament fight with Daniel. Johnny, you're a cream puff! There was a subtle clue to Silver's wicked schemes this season via the book Leviathan that he's reading when Kreese arrives at the dojo. The book was written during the Civil War in England and argued that a strong ruler with absolute powers was essential for peace and prosperity. This foreshadowed Silver's decision to get rid of Kreese and take over as Cobra Kai's kingpin, and also signals how the victory over Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang cements Cobra Kai, and by extension Silver, as a dominant force in karate in the valley for season 5. In mythology, Leviathan Leviathan also refers to a terrible monster that embodies chaos, is associated with envy and is a powerful enemy, although one which is ultimately annihilated. All very intriguing foreshadowing for Silver's role in the series. When Daniel teaches Miguel how to fix his mum's broken car, there's a little Karate Kid throwback. So you had to run after the car and jump in? What happens if you missed? That's a reference to the moment in the first movie when Daniel was taking Ali out on a date and the car wouldn't start. Carrie Underwood's performance of Moment of Truth at the tournament is a version of the original song by Survivor which played during the Karate Kid's end credits. And Daniel says it to Miguel this season after they've finished fixing up his mum's car. It's time for the Moment of Truth. And when Daniel teaches Miguel how to drive, they end up talking about music including the band Chicago, whose bassist and singer Peter Cetera also gets a shout out later. Peter Cetera's badass. Peter Cetera is the opposite of badass. Cetera's solo song Glory of Love played over the closing credits of The Karate Kid 2, and in another funny connection between the Miyagi-verse and Sly Stallone, it was originally written for Rocky IV. Robbie's determination to win above all else, to prove that he's not reliant on any particular person or technique, comes undone by the end of the season, proving true the Miyagiism which Daniel tried to teach him earlier on. Never put passion in front of principle, because even if you win, you lose. That moment recalls the second movie, where Mr. Miyagi explained to Daniel why he refused to fight to the death with Sato when he was younger, as it went against his principles of not fighting unless absolutely necessary. Never put passion before principle. Even if win, you lose. When Johnny goes on a drunken Twitter rant about his upcoming fight with Daniel, there are some funny throwbacks like Hash Brown Dead Meat, which is an amusing hat tip to season two when he recorded an online video ad for his dojo. Put one of those hash browns at the end, you know, like Hash Brown Team Cobra Kai or something. As for the dead meat threat, that's a reference to when Johnny's Cobra Kai teammates threaten Daniel at the tournament in the first movie. You're dead meat. And it pops up again in season four when Johnny's trying to recruit Piper to Eagle Fang. You're either a killer or you're dead meat. Also on Johnny's Twitter bio is his Eagle Fang slogan, Bite First. We bite first! Which is his take on Cobra Kai's strike first mantra. And amusingly, Johnny has had his motto, Bite Like an Eagle, emblazoned on the back of his t shirt. And when Amanda refers to the upcoming fight between the two old rivals as a showdown at the Okinawa Corral, it's both an allusion to the Karate Kid 2 and Daniel's face off with Chosen in Okinawa, as well as a pun on the real life event that was turned into a movie, Gunfight at the OK Corral, a famous shootout in the American Old West between lawmen and outlaws. Now, you definitely want to be savvier than Johnny when it comes to going online. Send it to the internet! And a good quality virtual private network like our video sponsor, Nord. VPN can help you with that, for example, unblocking content from your favourite streaming platforms. If you've never used a VPN before, it works by creating a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and a VPN server, which not only gets around firewalls on your connection, but it also blocks your internet service provider from knowing what websites you're visiting and stops them accessing emails or private messages. We recommend NordVPN as it has an incredibly easy to use interface, has a no-logging policy and lets you connect up to six 
most devices simultaneously so you can protect all your phones, tablets, laptops and computers. You'll get super fast internet speeds, especially when using the Nordlynx protocol, so your shows and videos load smoothly without any dreaded buffering. Connecting is super easy, so with just a few taps or clicks you can connect to a server in another location and browse the internet as if you were there. You can try it risk-free for 30 days and with our exclusive holiday offer you can get a huge 73% off a two-year plan plus one month free. Just visit nordvpn.com slash flicks or tap the link in the video description to access the offer or use coupon code flicks when you check out. So what other Easter eggs, callbacks or awesome details did you spot this season and what was your favourite moment? If you enjoyed this, do leave a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. And next you can tap left for a full breakdown of season 4, clues you missed to the big ending and predictions for season 5. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!